Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Indiana. Hi, Megan. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. Welcome to my little YouTube interview situation. You've become a sensation. No, I have not. I'm just, I'm lonely. <laughs> <laughs> I miss, me I miss me you guys. Me too. Yeah. Glad. So but we'll be together soon, hopefully. Um, I know. You're in California. Yes. And are you living your dreams out there? Or how is it? Are you like feeling weird or to get back? Like, how does it feel? Are you able to maintain the ballet? What's going on? Well, it's kind of funny. I mean, I'm so thankful to be in my family home and like have this lost time that, you know, when you leave home so early, it's really nice to just like spend time with my siblings who I haven't seen in ages and my mom and stepdad and the doggies. But it is really hard to you know, keep motivated some days because we don't have an end date. Yeah, but that's true. But since Olga, on Monday, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays every morning, so it's definitely a challenge, but it's good. <laughs> Sorry. That's There's okay. Luna. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's been good, and I've been teaching a lot on Zoom, and I never thought that I would be teaching, really, in my life because I never – really found as much joy in it that that's Charlie. <laughs> How many dogs are there? Um, I think five. Oh my God. <laughs> and then when everyone's here, like when my step uncle and step grandmother come over, there's uh, nine. Oh my God. I know it's ridiculous. We just like, we keep rescuing dogs. <laughs> that's sweet. Cause we have the space, so it's okay. You know, it's good, but that's they bark true. a lot. Yeah. So, yeah. But it's been definitely nice. I'm I'm so happy that I have like a bedroom to put my Marley down and teach or do class and I've been seeing my Pilates instructor still online which is like a heaven thing Amazing. because yeah. Body, you know, it's difficult with the wooden floors or concrete like whatever you're dancing on it's not what we usually dance on even though it's hard still. So it's definitely, you know, finding new ways to move and get your body back to feeling good, like your back and your calves and all that stuff. Yeah, totally. Are you able to jump where you are? No. Yeah, I'm I, not really jumping either. I, it's like, it's, I, Olga does jumps, but she doesn't do, she does like three jump combinations and then that's it. And then I do a Jock Soto bar on Wednesdays and Sundays. And he, he just does bar. Because nobody can really jump. It's, it's no, too No one can. It, yeah, it's, it's a little scary. It's better to do, like, in tennis shoes. Yeah, and Marimba, actually, my Pilates instructor, she keeps giving me foot exercises, which I feel like, you know, if we're worried about not jumping, it's such a good thing to get into. Yeah. Because you can just do it with, like, on the floor. You just push off of your feet. Or yeah, you push totally. off of all, anything that's, like, you know, or a baby toy. Yeah. There's things. Do you have a pool where you are? Yes. That's nice. See, I'm a big swimmer. I would be doing all of my ballet bars in the pool. All of I them. I do, do that. I do that sometimes too. It's the and best feeling ever. Jump. If you can do fifth position in a pool, you can do it anywhere. It's so hard. It is. It's hard because everything's wanting your legs to fly up. <laughs> I know. Every time I try and do like a tondu in fifth, it just like goes move. Yeah, and then no fifth position. If if you can do a good ballet bar in a pool, I'm, so I think my pool is gonna open up here. It is. I think so. I think because the CDC gave some recommendations for pool safety with the coronavirus. Oh. oh. And I, so I think that um, now that that's out, my pool is gonna be able to open up um, shortly. Uh, and I'm like, if I have my pool, I can do be anything. Good. I can do anything. <laughs> It's true. It does feel like that. Whenever you go in there, you can also just, I always dance uh, a little bit more intensely in the pool when I feel like Well, you the can move. jump. Yeah. And you can jump. You do soda shots, even though they're like teepees. You, but, do, you oh. do soda shots in the pool? Well, I tr sometimes I've tried. It's very bun head of me, but I've tried to do like. So for people that don't know what a soda shot is, it's like a leap. Yeah. It's a little leap. And it's very difficult in the pool because if you've ever tried to, you know, split your legs, they just go like this and that's it. <laughs> so 
it's good exercise too. <laughs> but it's nice. I mean, the pool is the best thing yeah, to it's have. The best. I'm so happy you're out there with your family in California. That's just cool. the best of this situation. That's wonderful. Yeah. It's good. That How are you so doing cool. in the city? I'm good. I mean, like, I'm in the city, but I'm just right. at home. Yeah. So, um,. I did see my brother recently, which was nice because we, we hadn't seen each other for a while. So, And he hasn't seen his niece in a long time, so he got to see Tuli. and He's so happy. Yeah, yeah. I think he already had the coronavirus, so. He did? He has the antibodies, yeah. No. Oh, I'm just going to take this dog down. Yeah. Don't mind her if she cries. Oh. <laughs> she's just, she's 15, so she doesn't want you to. <laughs> but she's whining. <laughs> okay, she's fine. <laughs> she's fine. Don't worry. This is her normal. Here's Luna. <laughs> so cute. Okay, so um, let's get into your experience in the company. You're a soloist right now. That's yeah, notoriously a hard place to be at in your career. Yeah. How are how are you finding it? You're a very positive person. How long have you been a soloist? Um, I think I have been a soloist for either three or four years. Uh -huh. One of not the that two. long. It's not that long, um, but it does feel like the normal, I guess, I don't remember how you say it. I guess people usually call it like a purgatory. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel that badly yeah. as a purgatory, but it does feel like it is a huge jump from going from doing like three ballets a night in the core and loving every second of it and then doing, I did like a weekend of shows in the winter season and so it was like a big shock. Just just a that. weekend. I did a weekend and then I did like four shows after that at the end of season but it took two weeks to get to my weekend of yeah. like six ballets which was crazy but it's, it's definitely trying to figure out how to manage balancing yourself when you are totally off and just taking class and you don't have one rehearsal and then having all of a sudden the three ballets that you're doing in the season in the same weekend and yeah. you're debuting all of them you yeah. know so um I would say like it's the most intense moment of your career where the the saying when it rains it pours really comes yeah. into play like, you're yeah, either yeah. incredibly busy doing those six ballets in one weekend, yeah. or you're waiting around being like, what am I supposed to do? Yes, exactly. So, I was not a soloist for very long, but I was in the soloist situation of accumulating principal repertoire yeah. for, for a bit of time. And so even if I was had the rank of a principal, I was still in this limbo where yeah. I, I really did not have much to do, so I know very much where you're at, and, um, you know, it's like a good and bad thing, but I think from the outside, is that Luna? You've got a Luna now. <laughs> <laughs> She's like a little, like, fascinator. <laughs> Luna, just go down a little. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, so, I think from the outside, most people would be like, what is wrong with being a soloist? Isn't that a good thing? Obviously it is. Anybody that gets into a company, they want to get promoted. But yeah. but there is this limbo moment of being a soloist where you're no longer busy every night in the core, which feels nice to be needed even if it's yeah. on a smaller level. Yeah, and exactly. it feels nice to be part of the community and being at one with all of the other girls and, and, and men, women and men. Yeah. And then you're not yet a principal with like – you know, your own repertoire of things. Like, for me now, at this point in my career, I know when we get into a season, oh, I'll probably do that, that, and that ballet. But right. for you, you're kind of like... What's going to happen? You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Still, like, it's, waiting for people like me to probably, like, <laughs> decide no. it's over. <laughs> no, I just like sitting in the back and watching <laughs> until I get one of the shows, you know? Sometimes there's six of them. Yeah, no, it's true. And it's it's like this moment of, I think each moment of rank has its own test to your, yeah. you know, um, how how long can you fight the fight, right? So, so true. For, for a core member, it's like, 
getting noticed and yeah. and standing out in a good way. And for a soloist, it's being ready at any moment. Yeah. And so that's the thing. And I have my own moments as a soloist where I was getting really frustrated. And I remember I, like, picked myself up and kept on going and, and like, randomly something came up and I was so glad that I had continued to work hard and done all the classes that you're doing right now, you know, like, so, so I definitely know where you're coming from. Um, tell us about your time getting to be a soloist. Like you're also in this interesting moment where we're transitioning directors. Yes. Which is definitely different. It's not, you know, there's nothing like necessarily good or bad that you can really, you can say both at any point with anybody, honestly. But I definitely feel like my time as a soloist has definitely been, like you say, the saying, it, when it rains, it pours. So one season I'll get to do so many things that are new, and it's so wonderful. And then, like, the week after season or something, when we get casting for the next or whatnot, it's just nothing. And then it gets really sad again. And it is a good way to figure out how to, like I said before, balance it. And with the new directorship, I definitely think it's a different transition for everyone, you know, because we're just changing. Everything is changing. And especially now with the world, everything is going to be even more different when we were already, like, starting to try and figure something out in our company. And I'm sure a lot of companies are going through similar situations. But I would say that it has been, it has not been very easy being a soloist. I do have to say, I'm usually a really positive person, but it's, it has not been that easy. I've had wonderful opportunities, but I've, it's been um, a big learning experience. I'm so thankful for it because I wouldn't be able to be who I am today without, you know, going through the hardships that it brings or figuring out school or, you know, finding new things that I really love to do, but it's definitely a challenge. But it's a good challenge because when I when you are on your toes and you get to understudy things and, you know, eventually you get an opportunity, you go full full force and you have so much fun doing it. Right. And I've always kind of had that career, honestly. I've, in the core even, like I got to do a lot of core ballets, so I was always on, but I also got to understudy a ton of just random different roles that, you know, certain choreographers or, or the director would place me in and I would just learn them. And then I, those people would either get injured or move to a different role or something like that. And then I got to do it, but I never really ever felt like I was, uh, necessarily picked for a certain role, I guess. I was always picked to understudy. So in that sense, being a soloist is pretty similar to my experience with like getting opportunities because I always felt like I understudied them first, which is kind of nice because you can learn it a little slower. It is nice. And, and figure out like what you like, you know, what, yeah. what different dancers bring to the role and how you're going to interpret it eventually. Right. You get to work on it without all of these eyes on you right away. Yeah. Yeah. So totally. it's, it's definitely a, that's a positive thing to take out of, a limbo space where you feel like you're not getting to do much and show up for your rehearsals even if it's one hour from six to seven which is my usual schedule of understudying and you show up and then you're like okay I'm gonna be here and do it full out in the back if it's okay with the dancer and then I'm gonna do a full out in the back yeah <laughs> and it's what are some examples of things that you've been thrown into that you were like oh wow I'm really glad I understudied that well or oh I didn't I don't feel prepared for that, but I'm being thrown into it anyways. Like, what what are your experiences with that? Um, the first two that pop up into my head are when I was still a core member, and I had to do um, square dance core, and I it was Alina Genova, and she had hurt her ankle in that complete, and Rosemary had just called a set a new set of understudies, so we were just learning it, like for the first time like probably the week before or something and we hadn't finished learning it and it was I think it was probably like two or three hours before the show I don't remember how long it was but Glenn took me into a studio with Gio as my partner and we just drilled it square dance over and over and over and over again and then I had to perform it that night after running it probably like you know a hundred times to try and figure out the choreography and that was 
so terrifying. But because was, that ballet in particular is very bare. Yes, it's just, you know, leotard skirt, your point shoes are beautiful, and your hair is bad. You don't even have a headpiece. Nope. Nothing. And the technical aspects of it, as you know, are so challenging. It's such quick footwork, different yeah. directions. It's like a lot of uh, ensemble work. So you have to know which dot. And I was the front girl for everything, wow. of course. <laughs> you know, the shorties, they always <laughs> front rolls. So I had to find all the dots. I know Alina's I, part. She holds the hand on the in the girls' dance. Exactly. With the principal, yeah. That's exactly it. So I had to that one. And that was my scariest one of the scariest core roles another one was Paz de La Hoya it's a Justin Peck ballet and I would Sarah, not want to be thrown into a Justin ballet no it's difficult because it's very it's like really nice when you're there and when it's being made because then it's ingrained in you and you really understand all the movement and you want to understand the movement when you're going to try and do it but it's difficult it takes time the movement is complex it's complex exactly and there's <laughs> a lot of it and then there's usually repeats Yes, repeats and a lot of group dancing. Yeah. So maybe for we could explain to people who don't understand, like, in choreography, when there's a repeat, suddenly you start doing the same steps as you did previously, but yeah. then at the end of it, you might do a different version and it goes into a different path. So you can't just yeah. go back into that mindset because no, there's always a little change. Yeah. And it's so hard to figure out those things, especially when you're doing last minute throw in. And it was the last show of the season. So I didn't think that I would be on at all. And I was you in the dorm room. already like yes. backed out. I, I was literally in the dorm room. I was still in SAB. This was like my first big throw on. And I remember my roommate coming and running to me and they were, she was like, apparently someone said you have to go to the theater. So I ran to the theater and then it was like two out. This was literally a, like like the call was almost on stage, I think. And Albert took me to the main hall and just drilled it into me. And then I just tried to do it, and, and I like, tried my best. When you're in those moments, you're not worrying about what it looks like. No, absolutely. <laughs> like usually, I usually was like, "What's direction?" And then the people would be like, "Go left." Yeah. <laughs> But in so, a Justin Ballet, there's not that much time. Like, for certain sequences of steps, you need to know a whole run of things. Yes. So That's that was super scary. That was the last of my core uh, throw-ins. And then the another one that was pretty bad was Divertimento, number 15. And I had just been um, asked to learn the... I think it was Brittany Pollock. Is it this so, one? That one. Yeah. I think it's Lauren King and Brittany Pollock, It's right? the first variation. Yes, and um, actually, I think Lauren King does another one, but anyways. No, she um, does that one. She does that one, And she too? just yeah. did it in the digital season. That's why. I, I, yeah. She's so beautiful. Yeah. But so, I was understudying it for the first time, and they were doing their complete, that cast, and Brittany hurt her foot on the stage. So, I went on the stage, and it, Peter was there at the time, and he was like, okay, let's keep going. <laughs> Just like, I hadn't learned any of the steps. Oh yet. no! <laughs> I mean, it was a really funny experience. Nobody was really upset. Like they were all kind of just laughing, rather. Because... And then, how much time did you have? And then I had, I think, two days to you okay, know. Okay, that's really good. It. So two it was two, you can do anything in two days. This is true. You really can. <laughs> just not in an hour. It's a yeah, little different. That's insane! Wow, you've had quite the situations. Holy cow. Because <laughs> I've always understudied things. I, I really have not had a career of understudying. Yeah. And I I think I can think of two things where I got kind of thrown into. One was Sweet okay. Three. Um, oh, my God. What's the last movement called? Uh, scherzo. Oh I got God, thrown into Scherzo, but I had done it seasons before. So right. that wasn't that you, crazy. You knew it. And then... Um, one time, Bowder sprained her ankle in a rehearsal, in a dress rehearsal of Western, oh. second movement, just in the prancing at the end when everybody's like, oh, no. in the square dance section, she yeah. sprained her ankle there, and I just like stepped up and grabbed Albert's hand, and we like finished the, the ballet, and then I did that night, but I feel like I was already really prepared, so that yeah. wasn't even scary. 
So that's it. I guess I should knock on wood because it could yes. be something else. Like, Happen. But maybe it's, maybe I've reached an age where they're just like, oh, we'll find <laughs> someone younger. Because <laughs> I'd probably just be like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> oh, my God. It's, it's definitely stressful, but it's also exhilarating, you it's, know? It's definitely um, something that we kind of pride ourselves at New York City Ballet that, like, we that show will go on no matter what and we're okay. really good at juggling a lot of repertoire a lot of choreography and people have to be fast learners and if you're yep. not a fast learner you become a fast learner yep exactly and I was not a fast learner and I had never really learned ballets like balancing ballets in my life ever except for the two years that I was in the school and so Rosemary would always be really on my case to to make sure that I knew it because she could see that I was I think pretty afraid and just nervous that I would get anything wrong. And so she would keep me after, like when we first learned Symphony in Three, I remember being in the practice room in our smaller studio and she kept me for, I don't know how long after the rehearsal. And she just said, okay, let's do it from the beginning. We're going to do the whole thing. And it was so scary, but it made me learn so much quicker. So I'm so thankful for all those hard moments but we're definitely the company that will just the show will go on I yeah. mean there's there's been times like there was a midsummer show where I wasn't dancing I came to watch like Alexa Maxwell and she was doing blue butterfly and she was having a bit of knee problems that's when she had oh, a, yeah. a knee yeah. problem and that's the show that she went out and so I was in the audience watching her and then I came backstage and I, it was the intermission and I went to the restroom by the stage and then I came out and Claire Von Eng said I have to go and do court but Claire Von Eng had a broken arm or a broken hand or something and so she went upstairs and then I went to, <laughs> I went upstairs as well and she came back to me and she was like Indiana I can't go on I can't even put tights on with this broken arm so I was like <laughs> okay <laughs> it, was, it was so sweet she, it was, she was in a panic she was like I can't I have a broken wrist or what, I don't remember if it was an arm, wrist, or a finger, or something. And she was like, Indiana, you have to do it. So Rosemary came, and she was like, okay, Indiana, you got to go on. So, so I went how on. much time was left in the intermission at this point? You had no makeup on. No, I, I think it was like the bells were ringing when I was putting on my tights. And then the girls in my dressing room were, you know, being like, Duh, putting it whatever on, whatever makeup. And then we went, and Rosemary was like, okay, let's have an emergency. And then I learned the other side really quickly. I hadn't done court in a really long time, in like two years or so, and then I just learned it quickly. It wasn't a lot, but it was just such a funny experience. I mean, I was <laughs> this not is why I've, I've never that. lived near the theater, <laughs> because if you're even across the street or nearby... That's like Mary Sell in DSCH. What happened? She was called to the theater, and it was like, I think, I don't remember if it was like on stage call or something, and she literally ran and made it on the stage. But she doesn't live by the theater. She got on the train, I think, to even come. <laughs> even Emily Garrity did the same thing in Pulcinella one night. That's crazy. <sighs> it's stressful. What about the one time, didn't Tr Troy Schumacher was outside at, like, a donor, yes. like, cocktail champagne thing. cocktail thing, and after a glass of champagne had to get thrown on to, what, DSCH? Yeah. Yeah. The two boys, which are so difficult. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. The thing, the stories, I mean, they, they make the best stories ever, I you know? I shouldn't laugh at this because now I'm going to be put in this situation. I, I keep needing to knock on wood because keep I've, really, I've really avoided it so far. But it's not, it's like, it's literally everyone who's a dancer. It's your worst nightmare. Being thrown into something and not having any idea what you're doing. And, yep. and literally... You've just finished being given this information, and the curtain goes up, and it's you're terrible. just like, "Oh, it's such a, it's really a night, you know, like those bad dreams where they all describe it." Yeah, it's they're the like ballet and, nightmare. Oh, I mean, we've just, all had that actual nightmare of yes. like being on stage and being like, "I don't know what I'm doing." Not being able to put your point shoes on, or not being able to put the makeup, and then there's actually not enough time to do that when you get thrown on sometimes. <laughs> I had one last thing that I'm going to tell you about this. I had a Nutcracker show, because I've had a fair few of these, where there was a misunderstanding on who was doing Spanish, 
who was doing um, tea, who was doing marzipan. So I asked my alternate, I was like, are, are, are you on for tea? And they were like, yes, I'm on. And I was like, okay, I'd just done snow, took off all my makeup, went down, I went to the PT room, and then Tommy comes in and he's like, the bells are ringing. He's like, dear, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, I'm just getting some PT, you know, what's up? And he was like, you have tea. And I was like, what? And it has a wig and the makeup and all of this stuff. And he was like, do you think you'll make it? And I was like, yes. And I ran down the stairs. I threw on whatever I had, put on the wig, and I did the dance. But I couldn't believe I had done that. I was so stupid. I didn't even check. You know when you get into a routine? Yeah. You don't check, like, the scheduling. And they changed so much in Nutcracker. Now right. I know. Right. And and it was so funny. I had all the makeup off, just relaxing. And <laughs> Tommy was like, oh, you doing all right there? So my story of this is the exact opposite. I got called by Peter's secretary on a Monday to yeah. tell me we've done a change of programming for the student matinee on Tuesday morning. Oh boy! And we're gonna need you to do Tarantella. And I was like, <laughs> okay, no problem. I this was at the point in my career where I was like in this kind of limbo of yeah. repertoire, and so basically I was just doing Tarantella any and every time they asked me with any guy. It was like always ready to go. Yeah. So I was like, no problem. So I show up to the early extra class for that student matinee yeah. with my makeup on, my Tarantella headpiece on, <laughs> and everything ready, but nobody else knew about it. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, Sean Lavery was teaching, and, and he was like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm pretty sure I'm doing Tarantella in, like, 45 minutes. And I was terrified. I was like, I don't want to be, like already and then be embarrassed like this isn't actually really happening like debbie called me i'm pretty sure this is a real deal <laughs> and it was happening it was happening but nobody else knew <laughs> yeah i know those things are so funny i've had i've had a fair few of those as well it's it's <laughs> it's really funny to show up to class in full makeup and then everyone's like what are you doing yeah and you're like i think i'm dancing <laughs> I'm not sure now because I feel like no one else knows. So you do like one combination like where you're like, okay, wait, I'm not going to commit because this is embarrassing now. Okay. Yeah. Um, I want to let everybody know what a global woman you are. <laughs> okay. you're, you're born in South Africa. Grew up Paris. in. Oh, you're born in Paris. Grew up in South Africa. Tell us My the story. Mom. Okay. I'll tell <laughs> it's complicated. It is. So. I, my mom is from South Africa, and my dad is from um, France, Paris, France, and I was born in Paris, and I used to spend, I spent, I think, four years of my life, three and a half, four years of my life in Paris, and then my mom and my dad moved to Philadelphia, and we lived there for three years, and then we moved, I moved to California, and my dad moved back to France, because my parents... What was happening in Philadelphia? Um, I think my dad had family in Virginia and maybe a little bit in Philadelphia. And I think he had maybe spent some time there in his youth or something. Oh, okay. That us there. It was pretty random, but it was So beautiful. he's French, but he has American roots? Yeah. His dad, his dad is also American, but his mom is French. Oh, okay. So we used to spend time in France. Or Philadelphia, and then I would always go to South Africa because my grandmother was still alive and my grandfather. And so we used to go, I don't remember how often, but I think it was pretty often when I was young. And then I just spent most of my time in California because I was training, doing ballet in high school and middle school. So and all this. by the time you were like six, you were like a world like <laughs> traveler? Yes, I was. That's crazy. How do you like... How do you take a kid on a flight to South Africa just for a visit? I don't know. I feel like it was pretty normal for my mom for uh -huh. some reason. Maybe because she'd taken it so many times. And how like, many other kids was she bringing with you? Was it just you? Just me. Okay. And when my brother was born, it started being, you know, me and my brother. But he was born when I was four, I think. So Because like, th those are big tickets. I know. I know it's a far flight and it's very expensive. It's probably probably wasn't as expensive. Before. Do you still have grandparents in South Africa? No, they passed away sadly. But I still have a lot of cousins there that I love, and I have an aunt and uncle there, and 
hopefully we'll get back to being able to fly there because it would be very nice to see them. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. And your mom was a dancer. Yeah, she danced in the South African company Pact when she was probably 17 or so or some sort of an age where you get into companies. Was it ballet, contemporary? It was ballet and had contemporary as well, but it was mostly ballet. She had RAD training. Mm -hmm. um, and then she moved to Paris when she was 18, and she started dancing just kind of freelance, and she got a job dancing for Radar, who's an amazing choreographer in France, who still works, actually, um, and Roland Petit, who's uh -huh. also a very famous choreographer. And then she did, like, TV and commercials and, you know, all, all these, whatever she could get, I think she, she did. And then she met my dad on a dance film set because he was filming. He was the cameraman. So that's how they met. But, Amazing. Yeah. I, I have definitely gone to a lot of places because of my parents because... I think they have a lot of friends in many places over the world, and we have family all over the world. So I'm, I feel very lucky to have experienced that at such a young age and be open to so many cultures, you know? It, it helps when you go into a big city, for sure. That's true. So do you identify mostly as a California girl? I, I think I'm very California girl, but I also I feel like France is very rooted in me as well because I spent all of my time that was not in ballet class and stuff in France and I would go there for months in the summer and Easter and Christmas break whatever holidays we had from high school I would always so be there. So would you fly by yourself or you'd fly with your brother out to Paris to be with your dad? Yeah I would fly with my brother but we were unaccompanied minors so you know you have from to... From California to Paris? Yeah. From what age? I want to say probably eight or nine. Something but at like court that. ordered. Yeah, I had to go and visit my dad. So yeah. it was in the beginning, I remember my dad had a friend who would fly with us. Okay. And I think yeah. that was probably when I was like six and a half, seven, I probably. Hope. I hope. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> and then. And then after that, I, I was with my brother and we were unaccompanied minors and you have to like go on the plane first and be in the middle rows and then you have to exit the plane last and it was just very... Also though, was that pre-9-11, right? Yeah. So like your mom would be able to go to the gate, see you yeah. get on the plane and your dad would be able to like, you know, could yeah. you imagine being, no, no. sending your kid off at the... Um, TSA, like, the security, like, I can't imagine. I mean, we were lucky to have really nice, you know, they pick you up at the airport, the people who are the Air France hostess, someone is designated for company minors, and they take you through, and you sit in, like, a lounge, and it, their lounge, you know, wherever they sit, and it's just, they're very sweet, so that's good, but it was definitely at times interesting, and my brother and I always loved candy, especially from France. So when we came back from France, we wouldn't sleep. We'd only watch movies, and we would eat all this candy. And I just remember my brother always throwing up at the end of the plane ride. And it was just like we'd come off the plane, and my mom would be like, what has happened? <laughs> She's like, you smell terrible. You guys look exhausted. And it's just so funny. <laughs> It's a funny memory now, but it was definitely pretty gross. Yeah, it's crazy. So yeah. so you did most of your dance training in California. Yeah. Tell us about that. I began, I went to Westside Ballet um, in, I think it's in Santa Monica or yeah. Venice, somewhere inland. It's in Santa Monica. And, yeah, Santa Monica. And I had a teacher named Caprice. And we did ballet, and then we d I did a summer camp with them and learned, like, some Hawaiian dancing and ballet and, like, various dances that were really fun. And then I found this small studio that was a little closer to us in Venice, and his name was Yuri Grigoriev, who ran the studi studio, him and his wife. And he was a Russian teacher from – he danced in the Stanislavski, and mm -hmm. he actually was in the same apartment building as Krami on the same floor. They knew each other. Kramarevsky was oh. one of our Megan and I's teachers in the company and he they knew each other. So when I went to New York City Ballet it was like going home almost yeah. because I got to see my te another one of my teacher's yeah. friends. Yeah. But he was one of the most special teachers I've ever had. He was so strict. 
he would always, he said, I mean, he said some things that probably wouldn't be allowed now. Like, he would always hit our stomachs and he'd be like, McDonald's. And <laughs> just to say, like, hold your stomach in because yeah. he, didn't, he, didn't, I mean, he didn't speak, you know, all of the English that we do. Right. Right. So it would just be like a short thing, but he was so strict and so amazing. He would always line us up at the bar, and there was a picture of uh, Mikhail Baryshnikov at our bar, and whoever was um, he wanted to put in the middle would be like the special person that day. And so we would go, and we would be like, oh my gosh, how far am I going to be away from this Baryshnikov? And there are little things like that that just like bring me smiles, but from him. But he he was a definitely a special teacher and gave me such amazing training to be able to do like the faster balancing technique without even knowing that I'd go into that. Right. So, so you didn't do balancing until you came to SAB. Yeah, I didn't know. Um, I it's embarrassing to say, but I did not know that New York City Ballet was a company, and I didn't know who balancing was when I was little because I think I was very. In California, you don't really get exposed. I was in the west kind of coast, too. Like, you don't, out west, you don't know much about what's happening no. back east. Just about, you know, ABT, Bolshoi, Kirov, all of the Russian companies, Paris Opera. I always, you know, would watch online and I would just be like, you know, in a YouTube hole just looking at all of the dancers and they were so beautiful. And then I got a scholarship to go from a Bolshoi summer intensive I did to go to Russia and train at the Bolshoi in Moscow for two months when I was um, 15. And so I went there, and on the way, I my teacher told me I had a best friend named Amanda de Oliveira, who lives in California now, actually, and she went to SAB, and she said, you should just go and try it out. So I went and I auditioned, and I loved it, and then I went to Russia, and I was doing the Bolshoi there. And Did training. your mom go with you? No, I went by myself. To, it was very... To Russia? Yes, it was a it was a one of the most educational Who trips. Did, well, I'll, first of all, you're already a global woman. Um, where <laughs> were you staying? In the dorms. Oh, okay. in like the Bolshoi dorms. Okay. But I didn't know the language yet, so it was definitely scary. But I got to go with my friend. Do you, Gabe. Do you know the language now? I I learned a lot of it when I was there, and I could get by. Wow. Definitely. And I can read it, but I just don't Are you remember. Serious? I can still read it because it was really ingrained in me, but I, I don't know what everything means anymore. I feel like I would need to do a couple more. Yeah. Like, you wow, know, I'm impressed. Stuff. But that was my, that was, I went there and then I found out that I got a scholarship to SAB Summer and I was like, oh my God, I got a scholarship. Someone wants me. So I was like, okay, I guess I'll go there. So I went. And I had my Russian points on, and I remember Susie and Suki being like, what are those point shoes? Yeah. They're so white, and they're not right. You need to wear freeds. So I changed my point shoes, but then I would always wear my Russian points for Darcy's class, Darcy Kistler, because she loved how they looked. <laughs> and it was, it was definitely like a moment in time where I was like, this is exactly where I'm meant to be, because the training was just everything that I kind of dreamed of like the finessing of things. It was kind of a perfect finishing school to my curriculum that I'd learned my whole life, I feel like. And it gave me kind of my wings to really just mm -hmm. fly or, you like know, Like you had a lot of great basics and then it yeah. gave you some nice style. Yeah, I really enjoyed learning that style. And it's really nice to just be open-minded with dance and just like let any styles influence right. you because then you become well-rounded it's just like when you travel it's like you get all those cultures right and then you're you know you're more cultural so it's just the same thing with dance and like getting some modern getting a little jazz right. getting you know all these different types of styles and same with classical so I'm I'm so happy that I got there but I hadn't I didn't know that that was going to be my path at all I had a total different trip and what did your mom think about you moving to New York she was so excited she was on board 100% already. <laughs> See, when I told my mom, um, well, I hadn't been asked yet. It was the beginning of my first summer. And I'm like, Mom, people want to be asked to stay the year. What is that even? <laughs> like, we didn't even know that that was a thing. And we were like, whoa, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and then by the end of the summer, I was like, oh, but I get asked too. And then I did. So um, it's just funny how, like, you know, 
vines evolve so much. Like, but my mom made me go back for a whole year at home before yeah. I was allowed. So, did you stay that initial year? Yeah, because I was turn I was fifteen, like turning sixteen in December. So it was kind of like the time, the time. where it was the time kind of needed to go to get into any company because, especially in California, not that it's not a wonderful place. It's not there's not as easy accesses to a variety of companies, and obviously New York is the hub of right. so much art and culture and everything. Right. But on speaking of your mom not letting or not saying you need to do the year first. My dad and my stepdad were both like, um, this is, you know, this is a big commitment. You yeah. need to make sure that this is what you want to do. They were a little bit more skeptical. But my mom was just excited because she was a dancer, you yeah, know. Yeah, she so knows. She, she got it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So, and how was school for you? Did you find a, a good way to finish school in New York or? Yeah, I, I went to Malibu High um, for ninth and 10th grade. And then when I was going to Russia, I had to go homeschool um, because I couldn't continue my education at this public high school in Russia. Right. So I went on that. And then when I got to New York, I started going to the professional children's school, which is where a lot of us, you know, go. It's either PPAS or PCS. And so I went there for two years and then I graduated. Yeah. And now I'm in Fordham which a lot of people are doing as well. Right. How's that going? Good. I just started my intro into art history in Asia. Oh, that's so, so fun. I'm very excited. It I started really enjoyed my art history courses. Or yeah, I'm, course. I'm super excited. Yeah. That's so fun. Um, so also being a soloist and, and being in that like, uh, you know, when it rains it pours kind of phase of your career. Yeah. School is the best advice I would give to anybody because then it takes all the pressure off of looking at casting and am I going to be used and am I busy. You'll always have something to keep you busy and give you a purpose. Yep. And then and then if you happen to be busy, you know, you find a way to just juggle it all. Yeah, I think it's honestly the best thing that any person, any dancer, any athlete, anyone who has those highs and lows – in their fields, right. it is like a godsend because you can really take the time when you're off and hopefully you, you know, it's before signing up so you can take two classes and then if it gets too heavy, you can always drop them. Like when I was doing Aurora, I had signed up for two classes and I had no clue that I was doing Aurora at all. Like they had told the princes, but I didn't know. How and I just, soon before you did your performances did you find out? I, I think it was like either three or four weeks. It was not enough time, honestly. And I, I was actually just talking to my mom about it today. Like we were just kind of going back in time. And I was like, I really wish, you know, someday I get to do it again and actually be more prepared because that is like a role where you re you cannot be taking 10 days off in Norway with your boyfriend and then do Aurora. I mean, it's ridiculous. <laughs> But I wouldn't have done that if I knew that I was going to do it that season. So along with that, I was taking, I signed up for two classes and right. I was like, okay, I cannot do this. This yeah. is stressful. This is a dream come true, but Who's I want to partner. Um, Anthony. Anthony. Oh, Hushley. nice. Right. That's right. Yeah. It was, it was nice to do it with him. We had done still feed together. So we had, we had our, you know, story ballet chemistry. <laughs> right. Right. He's such a quiet guy. How was your partnership? So fun. We would laugh so much, and Glenn was our ballet mistress, Glenn Keenan, so we would have a lot of, like, you know, really hard working hours, and then we would have a lot of laughter in the middle of it, which is always really nice and kind of puts a lot of pressure off, takes the pressure off when it's, uh, you know, a pretty intimidating role to Right. Was, and it was the first time for him, too. Yeah, both but of us. he deals with... Um, pressure in a really interesting way like I feel he, like he gets better he yeah he kind of has this own internal confidence he knows what he's capable of yeah and you'll give him information he takes of it what he can but he also like he knows what he's bringing to the table yeah he, I mean he's just brilliant he's so. incredible anything he does is gonna be even if he finds out about it a day before it's he'll true. be like, amazing it's true yeah, he's incredible. Oh. I'm, I'm going to interview him too soon. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> That'll yeah. be so fun. I know. I'm excited. 
I yeah. feel like when him and I get together, I do all the talking, so I'm interested to see what what he's plays say. out. I know. He's, a sweetheart. he's such a sweetheart, though. I really I love performing with him because he he just doesn't get worked up. Like he's no very chill. Yeah, that yeah. was really helpful actually in this instance because I was because it was you know a dream. It's every girl's little dream to do Aurora, so it was like that build up inside of me from when I was really young and just looking at all those ballerinas and actually doing it. And he, and I was just like, you know, like, Oh my God, I can't do this. I don't know. I don't know the steps anymore. And he was like, Indiana, you're going to be fine. We're going to go out there and we're going to do chance to dance, which is what we call each other. And it was, there's some moments where I looked back on the tape and I could see us like giggling at each other because we'd made like inside jokes with certain steps or something like that. So He's definitely a special guy. That's good. That's good. Yeah. So you've done um, two full lengths with the company. Which two. I did Lissel Feed, Romeo and Juliet. Oh, and you did three. Opera. But I guess Lissel Feed is l- l- half. I would consider it a full length. Yeah. Yeah. At which 10, is an incredible amount of full lengths for someone that's saying that they don't have much to do. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but it which is one's your, it. Which one's your favorite? was your favorite experience or is more suited to you? Okay. I feel like my favorite experience was definitely Le Sulfied because I was in the core and I, that was like a part that I'd dreamt as well my whole life. All, all three of those roles are my top story ballets that I've always dreamed to do with Giselle, but you know, we don't do that one. That's we just, need to do a Giselle. I know. I know. I know. I agree. I really agree. Maybe Rat Mansky can choreograph. I know. It. I, I've been dreaming of the same thing. <laughs> so hopefully that happens. But we're putting it out into the ether. In the universe. Yeah. Hopefully he sees this. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I yeah, I feel like Sylphide really felt like a part of me because I just I I don't know. I re- felt really like I resonated with the character. But then when I got to do Romeo and Juliet, I felt very similarly mm-hmm. to that as well. And then when I got to do Aurora, I felt really similarly because I guess it was like, I know it sounds so stupid, but it's like you get so into the stories that That's it's true. just, I, I couldn't choose one of those no, ballets. I no, I couldn't choose a ballet either. Well, I would give you a choice, but like, I know what yeah. you mean. There's a choice. There's like a few that are just amazing. Right. Sorry, my dog's excited. But they're, they're all, like, just very special, dear ballets to, I think, you know, most ballerinas. So it was, all of them were a very interesting, different experiences for each one. But I think Le Sylphide was the most magical. Yeah. And I, I do I do hope that one day I get to do Aurora again, because I think I would do it very differently now, you know? Right. We shared the um, Sylphide experience together. Yes. You were like, what's the pantomime? I could not... Oh, and you're complete. You looked at me and you're like, Indiana, what's the pantomime? <laughs> and I was like, and you were like, okay. <laughs> you went out and did it. And you did the same thing probably with me too. <laughs> I could not get it straight. For no, people so that, that don't know, it was like, what, what, what's the? It was like, you, I, love. Instead of I love, I remember that one so well. Instead of. I love you. It was you. I love. And then it was two hands. Right. Right. <laughs> it was just like 10 different ways to say the same thing. And you had to remember each time you were going to, no one yes. in the audience would know the difference, but no, this order so. of how we had to say it was like driving us crazy. It was so important too. Yeah. It yeah. was so. I did enjoy like saying crying was- or whatever. And we never get to do that anyways as short girls, I feel like. So it was like you could be really, like, luxurious. And yeah. It was a Swan Lake moment, which you've done. So you know how it feels to cry on stage. <laughs> I guess. I still think it's weird I do that ballet. But, like, like in my head, I don't I don't think of myself as doing Swan Lake. But I've done it. Now you've done it twice. I've done seasons. it. Beautifully. It's out there. <laughs> you don't look short on stage. Thanks, so. girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> and 
And what? Who has been your favorite partner over over all the years? Is there someone that you keep always dancing with that you're like, this is my guy? Well, I always dance with Harrison Ball. Oh, that's We've right. Danced together since the beginning. We've had. Uh, what have we done? We did divert together. I think we have a picture in divert. We've done, we've done so many ballets together and so many contemporary ballets together. Like choreographers come and we're always partnered. So we always go through all these experiences together. So he's definitely one of my favorite partners because we've just grown, like we've formed a bond that's really special. Um, I think one of my one of my favorite experiences was dancing with Craig Hall mm. um, before he retired, and another person that I love dancing with is Taylor Stanley because we got to share you know Romeo and Juliet together, and we got to share Year of the Rabbit, which is Justin's. I don't he is a special guy. Yeah, he's so special. He's yeah. like, and and when you go on stage with him, it's like you be, you're in this other world, you know. So it is. I told him. When I, I, so I guess we've done a couple things together, but we did sauna team together, which oh, is yeah. really kind of meditative. Yeah. And he has the most calm. I, I think it's because maybe he doesn't feel calm. So he, he puts on he this exterior calm. of calm. I'm yeah. not exactly sure, but I literally finished the show feeling like I had done a full like meditation. <laughs> like it was, I felt so soothed. <laughs> yeah, that's how I felt whenever we did Year of the Rabbit. Even though the beginning is a little more stressful for both of us. Uh-huh. But of it, it was like you would get off the stage. And that pas de deux especially is literally a meditation on stage. That's true. And so you would go off and I would just be like, well, thank you, Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> it was the best thing. He's I just, loved it. There's something really special about his energy. And same with Romeo and Juliet. I feel like we were both really nervous. For the partnering sections, because it's so complicated. It's complicated, yeah. It's complicated, and, and it's beautiful, but it's definitely very complicated. So we would we would be a little stressed out about it, but not always talk to each other about it, I feel like. And then when we did the shows, it was just like we just both let loose, and it was this calm energy that he has. Right. And the excitement of doing it, obviously, but it was so... His, I just love his energy. I do like dancing. There's, I mean, there's so many people in the company that are just amazing to dance to. Yeah, dance I don't think with. we have anyone we don't like dancing with, but yeah. yeah. I it's fun I, I get to dance with Russell because he's very tall. Wait, what do you or, do with Russell? Um, well, I've never really done a whole pot de with him, but <laughs> sections and ballets are very fun to do because like, like what? Pulcinella, we did a little oh, okay. section together. Okay. In dances, we do a little section together. Okay. <laughs> That's my experience with Russell, but I love doing it. So it's or, or we understudy in the back. We've actually understudied a lot of things in the back together. You and Russell? Yes. <laughs> He's so <laughs> tall. I've done um, duo with him, and I'm always just like, this is a joke. This <laughs> is a joke. Because duo... I'm fine if I'm on point with a guy. I don't feel self-conscious about my height. But yeah. in duo, you have to start off standing like on flat the, right the, next to each other. And yeah. for all the rehearsals, you're just staring at yourselves in the mirror. Which is me like, oh my God, this is <laughs> really funny. Just looking retarded. He is so tall. But I guess it was never, we never have done like real partnering together. It's only been like sections and ballets Little you know when it's partners but it's fun I mean everyone in our company is so great so yeah that's true um so you're since you're such a positive person I thought it would be nice if you could like give a little how do you get through rough times kind of message because yeah. you're you never well you'll let yourself get down yeah but you you never stop believing in you know, an end in sight. Yeah, I, I've definitely gone through my fair share of emotions. Megan has caught me many times just crying <laughs> randomly. Or if she asks me, when you ask me, how are you doing? And I'm like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> But I think it's important. I really do think it's important to honor your emotions yeah. and not keep a bottle in because you know, we're so passionate for what we do. I mean, any artist can relate to this. You know, when you go and, and especially when it's a performing art, 
you are so like it's your heart and soul. It's and then you. It's, it's you on stage. And you, you get to show like a whole side that nobody's seen before and that maybe you don't even know about yet. You're creating it in the moment. Yeah. And yeah. then you, you go off stage and then, you know, it either went badly or you didn't get this, the right feedback or whatnot. And then it's really hard. Or when you don't get to dance, it's also like hard because it's your therapy. For me, it's my therapy. Right. One of my therapies. So I, I think in those times, I definitely honor and have learned to embrace feeling what I'm feeling. So if I'm feeling down, I don't have to fake smile all the time. And, you know, you can let yourself feel down in the moment and be sad at times. But I definitely do try and keep a positive outlook because we have so many things to be thankful for on, you know, this earth, not even like in our little ballet world on like the whole earth. And I guess maybe it's because I've traveled a lot and seen a lot of things that have made me thankful for having a house or, right. you know, having friends, having family. It's, you know, it's, there's lots of things, having colleagues like we do and having the, the life that we have in New York City. It's so special. So in those ways, I try and remember that. But, you know, sometimes you can't remember those things when you're down and that's normal. So what I do is I love taking baths. I take a bath in New York City usually every single night and it's like my me time and I put a face mask on sometimes or I go to the Russian baths and that always makes me really happy. It's like a sauna, hot room, cold plunge. When you're in the bath, do you do something? Like do you read or, or are you busy with it, like a something or are you just like the like sometimes, zenning out? Yeah, sometimes I'm just totally silent and I just kind of am with myself and I it's kind of in the bath when I usually start to feel better for some reason I think water is a big thing for for my happiness and I think for you too that's why pools and yeah. bodies of water are so yeah. special yeah because it really it's a special thing for happiness and like our lives so being in a bath is a very small pool but I definitely feel like I have moments where I'm totally zen and I'll have a candle and I'll just close my eyes and just be in the so moment. You just or check put, out. Yeah. Or I put like a podcast or music or or I sometimes I read, but when I read in the bath I usually fall asleep. So I try not to do that because that's dangerous. Right. So, <laughs> but other than that, I usually I, I do I like taking walks in nature to stay, you know, within it's it's hard to be in a city sometimes. And I'm sure everyone knows this. And you forget how, not to be pessimistic, but how small we are. Mm -hmm. And how a lot of things don't really matter that we put onto ourselves that matter so much and we hold on to. So just like looking up at the sky or going to a park or something or going to the body of water, you know, the Hudson and just looking out. It's a nice way to just kind of go back to nature and realize that, you're just a human being and you're trying your best. Right. And and really the, the feeling of giving yourself saying it's okay, like everything is okay and that you really are trying your best instead of I found myself beating beating on myself a lot, saying, I'm not good enough, I don't look like her, I wish I had her body, I wish that I had her face, I wish I had I wish I could dance like her, I, or you know, whoever it would be. I, I found myself saying that a lot when I was younger. At, which is normal, and I've grown to find that it's, you know, it's so important to own whoever you are as a person, mm -hmm. and everyone is so special, and especially in the dance world, everyone dances so differently, so... Well, and the uniqueness nice is what is special about you, and, like, when you're young, and you're a teenager, you're just hating the fact that anything is different about you, Yeah, and then you exactly. get older, and you're like, oh, that's what's cool about me. Yeah, so it's it's... I guess it's a nice thing to talk about and like share too because it's not always talked about and it is it is nice to hopefully open those doors to some younger people earlier on because it will really take the pressure off. Like yeah. so much pressure that you put on yourself is just, you know, very relieved. So those are the things that I definitely try and do when I'm feeling down. But other than that, you know, seeing friends, having some ice cream, it always helps. <laughs> I'm curious, what were you going to do if you weren't a dancer? I had a couple things. I loved fashion. 
uh, when I was younger. I went to Parsons, uh, the school designed for summer course, and I did um, fashion, and I made a couple dresses and, like, made a whole clothing line and stuff like that, and I was really into that. And then I really loved photography my whole life. I've always taken tons of pictures on one of my cameras that I have, and that was a big passion of mine. But now it's kind of been more I want to do something with saving animals or helping animals or helping people or rebuilding habitats or something with, like, giving back to the earth uh-huh. now. Kind of drifted from anything that is, I guess... Uh, I guess more normal because I don't I don't have ballet is my passion for sure and dance is my passion and then the other than that it's animals are my passion so sorry I got a I got a notification and there's a plane flying over us <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's awesome. we made it so far we did so well <laughs> <laughs> I know I know but yeah I I I think. If I was to do anything outside of dance, it would definitely be going and helping animals or studying them, just simply studying them for something, you know, and helping them. And same with humans. Yeah. It's the same thing. I totally helping see you doing in some that. Yeah, like you're a caretaker. Yeah, something in nature. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what it is yet, and I'm going to school for something. Yeah. But I don't know what yet. I haven't right. declared anything. We don't know. <laughs> I've even Taking graduated class. and I don't know. <laughs> that, I know that's true. But you you are you doing NYU still? I'm I'm getting an MBA, but yeah, I I don't know even what that's for. Who knows? But I just, just fun. I just like learning and Me- I had like 2 weeks off where I did not have any school and I I feel lost. Yeah. So yeah, I'm back it's, in a, it's, in a summer it's, class and I'm like, "Ah, oh, okay." I have a purpose, especially right now. I know. I'm, I'm so happy that all of us have signed up for something in this time because we can really invest our time in it Yeah. and get less antsy, you know, and just concentrating on our careers and kind of focus on something else as well. Yeah. And that this is, this is temporary and someday soon I yeah. will see you back in the studio and no, I hope. we'll be crying together again. I know. <laughs> Very sure. <laughs> going over, going, what's the variation? Indiana, Megan, what's the variation? <laughs> what's the next step? <laughs> That's how it is too when we understudy or when I understudy you and you you haven't learned the ballet yet. It's great. <laughs> I love it. It's more of a collaboration of learning the steps. Wait, what is an example? I can't remember anything right now. Well, I guess I guess I remember you taught me all the new Ratmansky stuff and then Oh, the Ratmansky. It. That's true. The and then he kept voices. teaching it. Yes, and you would always. We would both come up to each other and be like, "What's the next thing? What did you change it to? Which one's the new version? That's the newest thing." But that's true. That was I fun to share. Yeah, too. Oh, that's right. We shared. Well, I we was, weren't the same part in Polyphonia. I was in the other one. I was in the other cast and a different part. But all the group stuff, I remember. All of us were just like, "Okay, what is this?" Yeah, there was a lot of remembering this last season. Yeah. And so we, we, need, we needed this break. We, I know. I know. <laughs> but not really. Okay, get, give all those doggies a hug from me. And I say, will. And say hi to your mom and, and your I siblings. Will. Say hey. hi and give a kiss to Tuli and Lynn, too. I will. Take care, Indiana. I can't wait to see you again Bye. soon. Bye. Bye.